Hello everyone. We are now getting to the end of the chapters for the R courses that I wanted you to do. And up until now it's been a little bit removed from reality in the sense that we've not really done much with this. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to actually load a data file into R. We're going to break out of data camp and just go on our own, load a data file into R. And then I'm going to show you how to do a plot and use the information in the data file through simple linear regression to actually make some conclusions and build a bit of a predictive model. First things first is we're going to load the data. Well, you're familiar with data frames because you've gone through the module in the data camp uh, chapters that talked about data frames. We're going to create a data frame and I've given you a file called christmassales.csv and christmassales.csv is a very simple file of 50 records. It contains two columns. One of the columns is visits. It's the number of times a customer has visited a store in the last year. The second column is the amount of sales that customer purchased between December, 3rd, or, sorry, December 1st and Christmas time. So what we're going to do is we're going to see is there any relationship between the number of times the customer has visited the store and the amount that they spent at Christmas time. There are a couple ways to do this. We can do it in native R, just regular R, or we can do it in R Studio. Um, the slides that I've prepared for you here is doing it in R. I will at the end though show you how to do it in R Studio. Um, you should have a file in the Canvas module called christmassales.csv, so go ahead and download that file to your own PC. Um, and we will load it in using R first, um, and I'm going to show you how. So in R, the file to be loaded is called christmassales.csv, and we will load the contents of that file into a data frame. And the data frame is going to be called christmas.df, just like we had data frames that were named df in the data camp modules. Um, and to do this, we're going to need to be able to load a comma separated variable or a CSV file. Um, and there's a function. As you probably imagine, there's a function to do pretty much anything in R. And there is a function in R that will allow you to load a CSV file. It will read the records in the file, and it will presume that you are loading a file that is separated by commas. You can tell it a different character that is separating your variables, but at this point, it's assuming that it's being separated by characters. So the command is, um, we're going to populate, that should be little christmas.df, um, that's uh, PowerPoint forcing capitals and I didn't catch it, but anyway, little c christmas.df is the name of our data frame, and we're gonna populate that using a function called read.csv, we're going to have to give it the name of our file, which is christmassales.csv. That's the name of the file I'm going to have you download. And then we're going to have one last part of that command be header equals true. Header equals true means that the first row of the file is your headers. And there is a header there, so we're going to indicate that as true. One thing I want you to note, in a rare instance in R or Python, either one, head, uh, the Boolean values, true and false, are always indicated as all caps. And that's just a weird thing you have to get used to and remember that booleans are all caps. Um, generally, things are in lowercase, but, but that's the exception. Now, that sounds pretty easy, right? All we have to do is go into R and run christmas.df is set equal to readE.csv, Christmas sales with the header equals true. But there is a big catch. There's a big gotcha. And that is that you have to make sure you have the file in the right place on your PC. So here's how to do that. First of all, let's go get the file. And when we get the file, you're going to have to figure out where to put it. Now, when you load R, R will look at your PC and it will say, I'm going to identify this directory as the working directory. In my case, it does my documents directory. I have Windows 10 and I have a documents directory and it creates my working directory as my documents directory. So I need to put anything I'm going to load into R into my documents directory. If I don't put it in my documents directory, I need to be able to tell R where to go get it. And this is a real difference between R and R Studio, because in R, this can be a real pain. If you don't know where the file is, or you don't know the file structure or the directory structure, it can be a real pain, a real pain to specify that. In R uh, Studio, it's really simple to a Windows interface where you just go browse and find the file, and it's a much easier process. Um, but anyway, we'll, go, we'll, we'll work through it, and I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing I want to do is actually pop over into R and show you a couple of the commands that we've talked about. 
here's our our environment okay and I'm gonna clear some of this out so we have a clean environment first thing we're gonna do is we're going to think about where we're gonna get our file where we're gonna put our file so remember I told you that it had to be in the working directory but how do you know what the working directory is so you can use a command called our function called get working directory you have to have open and close open and close parens as you do with all functions in R so get working directory will tell you what your working directory is and so I can look at that, I look at that directory and I can see that in users, my name, OneDrive, and documents is where R is looking for everything unless I specifically specify a different directory. If you want to specifically specify a different directory, there's another command, or you can change your working directory called set working directory. And inside the parentheses, you would specify a new working directory. It would be a new location where R is always going to look for documents or always going to look for files or whatever. Um, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go with everything being in my documents directory. So that will be fine. So the next thing, assuming that I have downloaded my Christmas.csv file, Christmas sales.csv file, I now want to load it into a data frame in R. And so that is, if you remember, first of all, specifying. The name of our data frame and we are going to populate that with the results of another function which is called read.csv and that function has the argument of first of all our file name which we called Christmas with a capital C capital S for sales and you do have to have the extension not CSV Close out the quote, and then the next argument in that command is that we have a header. So header equals T R U R U B. Remember, it's all caps. We close it out with a parenthesis. So there's our command. Christmas.df is going to be set equal to the results of read.csv, where we're reading the Christmas sales.csv and indicating that the file, in fact, does have a header. It has loaded it. It doesn't look like it loaded because it really didn't do anything, but it has loaded it. Um, and there's a couple of commands that we can use to, to see what's in our file. We now have a populated data frame called Christmas.df. So what we can do is we can say, well, let's view it. Capital V on view. This is another exception. Um, this command actually has a capital V when most of your function commands do not. So view.Christmas will give us another window. It will show us exactly what's in our data file. What did we load? set that to the side what we can see we've got customer number visits and Christmas sales okay also have a couple of other really standard commands ed all right go back to the right window you got to click on the right window to go back to the right window ed Christmas.df will give us the first six rows of our file it also gives us the help column names but you can also do the same thing with tail gives us the last six and then there's a number of other little commands that will allow you to um, look at the columns the individual columns um, so we'll try summary and that gives us sort of um, by column it gives us the, the uh, minimum value the first quartile medium mean third quartile and max just a command just to show you kind of what's inside your file. All right, so we now have a loaded data file, and that's great. The next thing that we want to do in our loaded data file is look at it. So we did already. We looked at view, summary, head, and tail. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a scatter plot. Now, what we're trying to do with this data file, if you remember, is we're trying to determine if the number of visits during the year can be a predictor for the sales um, that a customer is going to spend at Christmas time. So one of the things that we might want to do is create a scatter plot. And a scatter plot is just going to compare for each customer. It's going to compare those two variables. If the variables are very closely aligned and they're very closely tied, and in fact the number of visits can in fact be a really good predictor of sales, we're going to get a scatter plot that's going to show us a vertical line from the lower left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner. Um, and that is, or not a vertical, a diagonal line. 
And that's going to be very useful information. Um, but before we can do a scatter plot, we have to talk about something else. Um, that's going to be that scatter plot, the uh, function for scatter plot isn't part of the native R package. When you bring R up, you're going to bring up a whole bunch of functions, a whole bunch of things that you can do with data sets in R. But R is an open source language, and in that sense, there have been many people who have written packages. And packages are just additional commands that you can use in R. In order to be able to use packages, you have to go out and install them, and then you have to enable them using the library command. So I'm going to show you how to do that, because in order for you to be able to create your uh, XY plot, your scatter plot, you're going to need to be able to go out and get a package called Lattice. Now there are a couple of different ways of doing this. You can get Lattice from um, by using the install packages command, or you can actually do it from the toolbar. So you can go back into R and go to the toolbar, and there's a there's an entry there for install packages, and you can pull down to the right uh, selections and be able to install that package. When you do it. It'll show you that it's downloading a file from a mirror and some geographic location around the planet, and then it will load it to your PC, and it will let you know that it, in fact, has installed that package. Once you've done that, you've got one more command you have to go, and that is you have to, in, you have to actually invoke it. You have to make it active in your R environment, and that's done through a library command. So let's go do that. All right, up at the top here, we have our commands, and one of them is packages. So we're going to click on packages because we want to oops, load a package. Actually, let's not do that. Cancel this. Let's install a package. Packages, pull down to install packages. All right. You ask us which one we want. Well, we want one called Lattice, and they're all in alphabetical order. So we're going to pull down to the L's and find Lattice. way up here and there it is so we can hit OK on that it um, I've already have it I've already got it installed so you're gonna get a different message but basically we'll show you that it is installing it and um, and then once we have it installed and you've gotten your commands back um, the next command that we need to do is library that's a simple function that tells us or tells R that we actually want to use this package that we have just downloaded. And it is invoked. It's ready to go. So go ahead and pull down that lattice package and go ahead and invoke that with the library command. And that is going to enable another command for us, which is xyplot. xyplot allows us to run a scatter plot, which will help us figure out whether or not we have a relationship between our variables. So that function is a little more complex. We're basically doing a comparison of Christmas.sales with, we use a little tilde, which is the character above the, uh, you have to hit shift, it's uh, over there by the one key and visits, okay? And then the last thing we have to do is we have to tell it in what data file. It doesn't assume that it's gonna use the data frame that we've created, so. Uh, I didn't do that right, let's do this sort of data equals C. And we close it out. So XY plot, Christmas sales against the visits Using the data set Christmas.df, hit return, and we get our plot. In just a moment. There it is. All right. Our plot came up. Now, remember, we wouldn't be able to do this if we hadn't downloaded the Lattice package and installed it using library. But now we're able to do it, and we can look at this graphical representation of our data. On the vertical axis, we have Christmas sales. On the horizontal axis, we have visits. Remember what I said, that is, so if we had a diagonal line between these two, that it was probably pretty likely that there's a pretty tight correlation between visits and Christmas sales, which is great. That tells us that we can use the number of visits 
that each customer makes as an indicator of their likely Christmas sales. And when we start capturing visitors or capturing customers who make a number of visits to the store through the main part of the year, we can start advertising to them more heavily around Christmas time because they're more likely to purchase what we're looking for, um, more likely to purchase more product at the end of the year. Okay, But that's kind of conceptual, right? We don't really have anything that's going to tell us, you know, what's the, you know, what's the real sales? What are the real sales value? If somebody comes in 15 times, what is the real sales amount that they're likely to be able to, uh, we're likely to be able to count on for them, from them. So let's go back to our slides. We've got the packages installed. We've done our XY command. Um, I skipped ahead a little bit. You see the command right here. And now we're going to. We're going to go one step further and we're going to do a simple linear regression. So if you've watched the presentation that I posted into the Canvas shell, you'll be able to see kind of a little bit about how simple linear regression works. But what it basically is, it's a very supervised predictive model that allows us to take one variable and when we compare that one variable to a whole bunch of past data, we can then build a model that will allow us to predict what the other variable will be. So we'll get when we run simple linear regression, we will get two values. Um, R will give us, first of all, the y-intercept. That is the place at which our line would cross the y-axis. It will also give us the slope. Those two things are statistical terms, and they're not 100% necessary to fully understand, because we'll look at this actually in a, an equation. But what we're really after is that for every input variable of x, every value that we have of x, we can now calculate with reasonable expectation what we think y is going to be. So again, for every input value of x, if that's the number of visits, we can reasonably calculate what the amount of sales at Christmas time is going to be. So from the plot, it looks like we've got a pretty tight connection between those two variables. But now let's see if we can actually get some real values out of it. So here's the R command that we're going to use. It's LM, which is a linear model. Um, it says we're going to calculate, use a formula where we're going to compare Christmas sales to visits. Um, Christmas sales is going to be our dependent variable, meaning it's going to be the one that is determined by the number of visits. Okay? And then again, we have to specify that our data set is Christmas.df. And once again, that Christmas should be um, little c. I need to use a different name for that because every time it sees Christmas, it tries to capitalize it, and I don't always catch it. So when we run that, it gives us two values. It gives us a y-intercept, which is 0 0.2185, and it gives us a slope, which is 5.2860. Now we can actually use that information. So if the y-intercept, I put it in the value. So y um, is our, if you come down here, y is our value that we're trying to predict. And we're going to go ahead and use the intercept value, which was 0 0.2185. And we're going to add that to the slope times whatever our x value was. So if x was 11 visits, we would multiply x by the slope, which is 5.2860. We would add in the intercept, which is 0.2185. And that will give us our value for y. This becomes our model, or in our case down here, Christmas sales is equal to 0.2185 plus 5.2860 times the number of visits. That becomes our predictive model. So we can now, knowing the number of visits, we can now predict the amount of Christmas sales. Let's go do this in R. Going back to the console, and we are going to run a linear model with a formula the formula is compared Christmas Christmas sales and we'll use the tilde again and specifying that our data equals Christmas.df. Okay, linear model. The formula is Christmas sales being predicted by visits, where the data is Christmas.df. And we get, uh oh, I didn't do it right. I didn't do it right because the command is wrong. 
And this just, you know, highlights, further highlights the specificity of our commands. Equals. Coda. There we go. Okay. So our formula returned two values. The values are the same values we were looking at. The intercept is 0 0.2185 and the slope, which is listed under visits, but it's actually the slope, is 5.2860. Let's take a look at that in context of our scatter plot. Right? This is our y-intercept or our y-axis. So our intercept is actually really small. So it's 0.2185. That's the point at which our line, if we were drawing a line, would intersect the y-axis. And it looks to be about right, right? It's pretty small. It's a pretty small value. So it's coming down almost to zero. If we decide that we're going to look at five visits, say somebody spent came in the store five times, and we wanted to see, does that make sense, right? Five times. Well, if we look at our formula, our formula would, take, would say, take that x-axis, that x-value five times, multiply that by the slope, so 5.2860 is going to be about 2627, add in the intercept, which is negligible because it's so small, and that would tell you that if you're going to have about five sales and you're going to hit the line, it's going to be right around here. So yeah, it looks sense. It makes sense. But let's actually plug numbers into it and see what we get. Okay, Christmas sales equals 2.185 plus 5.2860 times the number of visits. What if the customer visited the store 10 times? Christmas sales would be 2185, that's our intercept, plus our slope times 10 visits would give us a value of 53.0785 or $53.08. So we are able to predict that a customer who comes in the store 10 times is going to spend $53.08 at Christmas time. If the customer visited the store only five times, which is the example that we just used, Christmas sales would be 5.2860 times 5 plus 0.2185 for a total of 26.6485 or 26.65. And that's what we can predict that the customer is going to spend at Christmas time if they've come into the store five times. But you can see that the one thing that changes here is the X value. So for every X value, every number of times that a customer has visited the store, we can plug that into this formula and calculate out what that's going to be, and that could become a fairly good predictive value. Here's the challenge. Our model that we have, I set up the file to be pretty tightly correlated. So the, the values that you get, as you can see from the plots, are going to be pretty close. It's not always that clean. In a lot of ways, you'll have a lot of error. So there'll be a lot of error all over it, or your values that you get will be kind of more adjusted. The reason why this looks as clean as it does is because the data file that I gave you is pretty tight and pretty clean. Um, that just highlights the fact that the value that you're going to get out of this as a predictive model is going to depend on the accuracy of the data that you fed into it or the accuracy of the relationship between the variables as indicated by your input files. So when you load your data and when you look at your data, and you look at your plot, and then you run a linear, simple linear regression on it, everything is dependent on the data that went into that data file. Everything was de dependent on the data that was in the CSV file. So you have to be careful and you have to be cautious in using this as a predictive model, um, just simply because there's, there's, uh, there's too many things that could go wrong. And there's too much uh, error. So we know we have a fairly good model. Um, we saw it on an XY plot. Um, it seems to work okay. It seems to make sense, um, but we have to be careful because um, there could be a lot of, like I said, there could be a lot of error. There could be a lot of variability, and if there's a lot of variability, then that's going to make our model not as good as we think. So let's recap what we did. We loaded the Christmas sales CSV into the working directory on our PCs. We pulled that down from Canvas and put it into our working directory. Um, we could use um, R to figure out what the working directory was. We used the, a function called read.csv to load the file into a data frame called christmas.df. So that's what we did to get the file into R. We installed the lattice package. Again, remember, you only need to do that once. It'll load it onto your PC. It will be there forever. But 
you do need to load it each time you want to use it, and that's the library function. So that is um, that's a separate function, um, separate process, but it will need to be done each time, but only once each time you open up R. That will, uh, that will allow you then to use the XY plot function, which I showed you, to create a scatter plot. And when we create the scatter plot, we specify the fields that we want to compare, and it allows us to see the relationship kind of visually between those two fields. Then we ran a simple linear regression to determine what the intercept and slope was so we could build our formula, and we plug those numbers into our formula where y equals the intercept value plus the slope value times x. Then we can use our supervised model for predicting Christmas sales based on the number of annual store visits. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the file and I want you to download it. It will be in Canvas. I will put these slides, you'll see these slides also in this video, um, all in Canvas. And I want you to work through this. Now there's one thing I promised I would do. Um, and going back, I want you to work through this. And then I want you to see if you can take a screenshot of your plot your linear regression, and your code. Um, just screenshot those and drop those into a Word document or something like that and send those up to me so that I can see that you had a, a chance to sort of work through this. There's one thing that I told you I would do, and I will, and that is, let's go ahead and do this in our studio. Our, our studio yeah. i got to find our studio. Pretty much everything in our studio is going to be the same except for the actual act of loading the file. Our studio comes up with um, different consoles and different uh, quadrants. And this one down here is where you can actually import a data set. You can do it up above here as well. But if you want to import a data set, you can come down. This first option here is text-based. A comma-separated values file is really a text-based file. It's sort of considered to be a flat file. So we can hit, we're going to load this from text-based. And now, like I said, you browse for it. And just look around and find the file that you want. It can be in any directory that you want. So you hit Christmas sales, you hit open. It's going to ask you some questions. First of all, is there a heading? Yes. Remember, that was the header equals true. And then what is your separator comma? So these are all default values and you don't really need to change anything. So you can go ahead and hit import and we'll bring your file in. And now you have customer number visits and customer sale or customer sales, just like you did before. You can come over here to the console and run the rest of your commands. You can make sure that you've got Lattice installed and that the library is loaded. You can run your XY plot and you can run your linear regression model to get the values that you need so that you can go ahead and complete out your equation. So again, I tend to like the um, RStudio for certain things. It can be easier for loading files the first time. Uh, your choice as to which one you want to use. Okay. So again, go ahead and load the file, um, run the linear regression, run the XY plot, get screen captures of those, and send those to me as your assignments for the week. Let me know if you have any questions.